I'm a little slower with things right now and uh, don't completely feel like myself, so, uh, but I'll be, I'll be back running full speed soon, okay? Um, I want to find Matthew chapter 7, and uh, this morning I want to talk to you about faith, first of all, and then if I get around to it, we'll talk about prayer. I'm just going to, I'm going to let the Lord lead me through this, and I, I, I've got a lot of information uh, to go through here, but uh, we'll just let the Lord lead us in this. So let's go forward here, Janie, with this, uh, and I want to bring up Matthew 7. If you don't have a Bible, there's, there's some up here uh, at the front, and uh, if you don't get everything that I say, you can also, uh, you can go to YouTube, uh, and you can uh, type in the Fire Christian Fellowship, and it'll take you to the church's YouTube page, uh, and you can find uh, this message and all the other ones uh, on YouTube, or you can access them on Facebook because they are uploaded through Facebook as well. You just go to the church's Facebook page. Uh, or you can get a CD. If you need a CD, uh, just ask us about one afterwards, okay? All right, so we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7 this morning. And I'm going to start reading at verse 24. This is something in particular that I sense that the Lord was uh, putting on my heart for today. And it says, if you can go uh, with me on this, Janie, as we go through this. He says, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine, keep going with me, here we go, and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Let's read that verse again. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And every one that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall I liken unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Are you all with me this morning? Okay, let's pray. Father, I just thank you this morning. God, as we just open up your word, we thank you, Jesus, Lord, for your holy word. I'm reminded, Lord, that your word says that it is the engrafted word of God which is able to save our soul. Lord, I thank you this morning, God, that we are not going to be forgetful hearers, but, Lord, that we're going to be able to hear your word and, Lord, to do this word, even as we've just read. Lord, now I thank you for just opening our hearts, first of all, to hear and open our eyes to see, Lord, what it is that you want to say to us today. I thank you for the communication of your word. I just turn over this time to you, and we just we trust, Holy Spirit, that you are going to teach us, even as your word says, that you are the teacher of the church. And God, I thank you that you're going to guide us into all truth this morning. And we praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's go forward here, Janie, with this. First thing that I want to put an emphasis on with you that uh, we've been talking about over the last several weeks, we've been talking about faith. And this is one of the things that we have been praying concerning especially in our city. As we've been going out into the city, uh, I have been asking you that one thing that we are praying for is for faith. And we're praying for faith in our city. And we're praying uh, for us to have faith uh, while we are in this city and while we're out in the city. So I want to focus on faith for just a few minutes uh, with us this morning. Now, when we look back, I want you to look back at Matthew chapter 7 
in verse 24, he says that whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, he said, I will liken him unto a wise man. Now, I made some notes, personal notes that I didn't put up here concerning this. Uh, and this word that appears in the Greek for a wise man is the word phronomos. Phronomos. And it means to be a thoughtful or a thinking person. Uh, it also means to, to be, in a sense, mental or intelligent or skillful. So I want to put a, an emphasis on here in what Jesus is saying is that we cannot just hear what he has to say. But Jesus says we have to hear it, but we have to do it. Okay? So if I'm looking at verse 24, he says, I'm going to liken this person to a wise person, a person who will do what I say. All right? So we know that whenever Jesus says something, it's not just for us to hear it, but it is for us to do it. So there has to be some type of action or some type of application or some type of implementation that accompanies whatever he says to us. Let's go forward here, Janie. So this is literally the, the bedrock of our faith in Christ. Faith in Christ, there is a, a bedrock in being a doer of his word. I want you to look real diligently with me in verse 24 again. Because he says, The wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now, in the application of this word, we know that the word of God, the Bible says that the word of God, it, it stands forever. He says that a, a flower will fade uh, and the grass will wither, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. God's word will not change, and through time it does not change. His word is living, as April had said earlier, uh, and it's going to stand. Even Jesus said that it would be easier for heaven and earth to pass away than the crossing uh, of the T or the dotting of the I within the word of God to pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away before the word of God ever passes away. If there's one thing that is sure in this life, and most people in this life are looking for some certain amount of security, that is in this. This word will not change. If there's something that I could find to anchor or to be something that is secure, you know, the whole world is changing around us. But this word does not change. But this word within it has the power to change us. But... In all of what Jesus is saying, it's not just the hearing of his word, it is the doing of his word or the application of his word that really begins to bring change. Now, yes, the hearing of God's word, it does uh, produce inside of us, as Romans 10 says, that faith comes by hearing, and that hearing is by the word of God. So we have to hear the word of God. And that doesn't mean that, that you're just hearing somebody talking about it. You have to literally listen to it with your heart and take it in. All right? So being a doer of the word is the bedrock of our faith. Okay? Now I've made a note up here that faith is demonstrated. Okay? Faith is demonstrated. If I have faith, in Christ's word, if I have faith in what Jesus has said, then there will be some type of demonstration of that in my life. Someone can say, as the book of James says, he says that you can have faith, but that faith can be dead. And the reason that it is dead is because it is not at work. Okay? All right, so let's go a little bit further here, Janie. So find the book of James with me real quick. All right, I'm going to pick up speed here. Say amen, glory to God. He's going to pick up speed. <laughs> he was dragging his feet through that. We was just walking. We'll start jogging now, okay? And then we can get up to running. All right, so let's look at the book of James real quick. Now, James has a lot to say about faith. One of the things 
that he opens up this whole book talking about is about the trying of your faith. I'm not going to get into that this morning. But if you have faith, that faith will be tried. Okay, and there is uh, a way in which we can go through those, those trials of faith in a joyous manner. Okay, some things that happen to us in life, uh, we, don't, we may not count to be joyful. I'll be real honest with you. Uh, in this past week, uh, I've faced a tremendous amount of discouragement uh, and, I mean, almost uh, depression because of things that I'm facing in my own body. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there wondering, am I going to get the use of my thumb back? I mean, I don't know how important you feel like your thumb is to you. But I never really thought it was re that really uh, of an important little member until uh, you don't have it. And then you realize how difficult everything in life is. You can't open a jar. I can't even open a potato chip bag because you've got to have two thumbs to do that. You know, I mean, just little simple things are become difficult. Uh, and, you know, you start thinking, Lord, am I going to have a deformed thumb? My wife's been trying to encourage me through that. And she says, Todd, you you got to have faith here. You're going to have to believe God through this. Uh, so... You know, this is not something that I'm standing up telling you uh, that I'm perfect in faith. This is something that I am presently working on as well. And uh, with measures of faith, I know this, that faith is not just going to be something that happens. Faith comes from the Word of God. I have to get into God's Word and look at what He is saying and begin to apply that to my life. And I have to begin speaking it over my life. Speaking the word of God over my life. Okay, I can sit around and uh, worry or be fearful or anxious. Or I can do what the word of God says. He says not to be anxious or worry or fearful or fretful about anything. This is from Philippians 4. He says, but in all things... Through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard your heart and mind by Christ Jesus. So the Bible already tells me what to do. In the moment that I feel anxious, fretful, worried, fearful, you know, we can be fearful of a lot of things. He says that I need to go to God with prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, many times this becomes the most difficult part is to try to uh, give thanks to God when something does not seem thankworthy, okay? I'm not sitting around saying, thank you, God, I broke my thumb and my rib, but I have to find a place where I am giving thanksgiving to God. This begins to move me away from uh, thoughts of self, you know, when, when you are in pain or when something is going on with you, it, it causes you literally to become very self-focused or self-centered. You know, and, and uh, for many of us in life, we don't need much help with that anyway. But uh, when, when we get into a place where we are in a bad situation, it really turns us more inward and focused on ourself. Uh, so it's... I'm not telling you that this is something easy, but beginning to find a place where you are praising God is a place where it extends your faith. And this is something that I've been communicating to you for, for many years now. It takes faith to pray, okay? It takes faith to pray for something, but it takes even more faith to praise God for something, okay? Something that you have not seen yet, something that has not come to pass yet because that is faith faith is not fa faith is not in what you see faith is in the unseen you have not seen it yet but listen you can pray for something that you have not seen come to pass yet but can you begin to praise god for something that you have not yet seen come to pass okay is everybody good with that because there comes a point when i i have to believe in the prayer Many times I believe we're praying for something because we're still trying to get the faith for that thing. When faith, the Bible says, when you stand praying, believe that you receive it 
and you shall have it. At some point in the prayer, faith has to become real. And when that, when that faith is real, I am at a point where I don't need to continue to pray for it. I need to begin to thank God for it. You all hear what I'm saying? Because if I'm sitting here saying, God, I need healing. God, I need you to heal me. God, I need you to heal me. Okay. Yes, he heard me the first time, and I'm not saying that we pray for something simply one time. There is a thing of, he said, through prayer and supplication. Now, supplication is a, a continued prayer where you have bound yourself to something in prayer. But you have to, at some point, begin to couple together with that thanksgiving. That's why it's very important when, when we are here and we have a time of what we call praise and worship, this is not just us singing songs, and this is not... Uh, performances, okay? This is a celebration of faith where we are giving thanks to God. And I have to give thanks to God through prayer, uh, through praise, and through worship. And those things have laid out parameters uh, within biblical context. All right, I got off of where I was going. Told you I'll, I'll run a rabbit trail in a minute. All right, so let's go with James chapter 1. In verse 22, going back here, he says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So it is very possible for us, within the context of Christianity, to deceive ourselves. And the deception in that is when we hear, but do not do. Okay? Verse 23, he says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding himself, uh, his natural face in a glass or a mirror, for he beholds himself and he goes away and straight, straightway he forgets what manner of man he was. Verse 25, But whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Okay? So many times we are forgetful concerning the word of God. And this is why I believe that God puts other believers in our life is for us to be reminded. The Bible says uh, that we are to encourage one another daily. We are to be put into remembrance of what God has already said. You know, Peter said, it doesn't matter even if you know this and you're walking in it. He said, I still believe that it is meet uh, that you be reminded of this. Many times we have to be stirred up concerning a thing. Let's go on to James uh, chapter 2 real quick. While we're in James, let's look at what James says in chapter 2, verse 17. He says, even so, this is verse 17, faith, if it has not worked, is dead, being alone. He says, yes, a man may say, but you have faith and I have works. He says, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Verse 19, you believe that there is one God. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So, you know, I'm not trying to, to preach to you a works uh, religion. I don't preach religion anyway. I'm talking about a relationship. But in this relationship, uh, faith is the same as trust. But it also, this word in Greek derives from a word which we use uh, in a, a banking sense, which is called equity. So faith is a spiritual equity. It is actually a substance of something that can be worked with. Let's go forward here, Janie. So I'm talking to you about your faith. I want you to be encouraged in your faith. Okay? So faith is a spiritual key. Let's, while we're right here at James, let's flip back to the book of Hebrews. You shouldn't have to go back, but maybe a couple of pages in your Bible. And let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. So I want to look at two, two different verses right here. I've got a lot of scripture, but that's all right. I'm not preaching from the newspaper anyway. I'm preaching from the Bible. Okay? So Hebrews chapter 11 tells us something about our faith. Our faith is a substance. Let's look at verse 1. Many of you could probably quote this verse uh, forward and backwards, but that's okay. He says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and things not seen. Okay, so when we're dealing with faith, 
uh, we are dealing with the unseen. Now, I've had many times people ask me, Todd, how can you believe in a God you can't see? Well, I believe in all kinds of things that I can't see. Okay? I've never been to Alaska, but I believe it's there. Have you ever been there? You believe it's there? Well, you believe it's there because somebody told you that, right? Maybe you said, well, I saw pictures, whatever. You have faith. So every man has in himself a measure of faith. You have faith to believe things, okay? God's already given you a measure of faith. But faith being directed uh, in the proper channel toward God becomes a substance where we have something to work with, okay? And I'm going to go further in that in just a minute. Hold on to that thought. So let's look at verse 6. In Hebrews 11, he says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. He's talking about God. For he that comes to God, I have this underlined in my Bible, comes to God. That is a prayer phrase in the Bible. Coming to God through prayer. Many times through the New Testament scripture when it talks about you coming to God, it is talking to you coming to him in prayer. Okay, everybody with me on that? For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is a key and it is a spiritual key. And it is a spiritual key that unlocks things that would uh, normally be locked to us. Let's go forward here, Janie. So I've got a little simple statement up here that faith is vital to everything within Christianity. If, you, if she goes to the next line, it'll tell you that you cannot live a Christian life apart from faith. It cannot be lived. Christianity cannot be lived apart from faith. So you might as well go ahead and settle this in your heart that if you are going to be a believer or a follower of Christ, that you have to live by faith, operate by faith. Okay, let's bring those verses of Scripture up real quick. should be Galatians 3 uh, and 11. Let's keep going. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're right. So Christianity has to be lived by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse uh, 7 says uh, that it is the just that they will live by faith. So if I'm going to be a follower of Christ... I have to go ahead and settle this in my heart that I am going to have to live by faith. Everybody okay? Man, y'all quiet this morning. I have to live by faith. I am not living by anything else. I'm not, I'm not going to live paycheck to paycheck. I'm going to live by faith. I'm, it's amazing how... What we talk about how we live. I can sit around and say, I'm living in pain. I'm going to live by faith. I have to begin to believe that and I have to begin to say that to myself. I have to talk to myself. You know, the Bible says that when uh, David became discouraged, that he had to encourage himself in the Lord. Sometimes there's not anybody to encourage you. Sometimes we, we lean on other people. We rely on other people to encourage us. Even when we're discouraged, many times you just need to start talking to yourself. I know that sounds, you know, oh, Lord, pastor talking to himself. Yeah, Joe says he does it all the time. Good, I don't feel so bad. You have to talk to yourself. But it's amazing how that your mind, okay, our mind is, is, is natural, right? It's focused on the natural and the carnal and the earthly. And it's, it's thinking about the things that our senses are picking up. My eyes, my, my ears, my nose, you know, all of these five senses, everything that's coming into that. The Word of God is not natural, it is spiritual, and I have found it many times that what I am thinking about is not the thoughts that I should be thinking. Okay, so Philippians tells me that I have to, Philippians 4 tells me that I need to think on these things, things that are just, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are of a good report. If there's anything that's honest, he says if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, to think on these things. So this tells me that I have to take hold of the reins of my mind 
and rein my mind in according to the word of God and I have to begin to tell it what it's going to think about. Isn't this sound like the craziest thing? That I'm having to tell who is telling who what's going on here. See, what happens is when we become born again as a believer, we have a born again spirit on the inside of us. And there is a whole different mind on the inside of us. The Bible says, if you mind the things that are of the flesh, there will be death. He says, but if you mind the spirit, it will be life and peace. I'm literally telling you that there is two minds going on inside of you. And the Bible tells us that you can be double-minded. And he says, if you are double-minded, do not believe that you're going to receive anything from the Lord. You know why? Because you are still hearkening to that carnal, natural man. That man, you have to silence him. And you have to tell him what the word... You have to tell him what the word of God says. Okay. So what else have I got up here? Let's look at Hebrews while we're there. In Hebrews 4. Now herein becomes a problem. In verse 2 he says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So anytime that the word of God, that I hear the word of God, faith has to be mixed with it or it will bring no profit to my life. You just become a hearer. Faith has to be mixed with it. And faith is not just you saying, I believe it. Faith has some action to it. Let's go forward, Janie. So we are called not to just believe on the Son of God. Listen to me real closely. Because many times in the, the, the message of the gospel, when it is presented, many times what we are told is that we simply need to believe on Jesus and we are in a place of eternal security at that point. Listen to me real closely. We are not just called to believe on the Son of God, and that's it. Hear what I'm telling you. Go forward here, Janie. You are called to live by faith. This is not something that's about a one-time decision that you have made. This is where I've, I've approached so many people in my workplaces and uh, jobs that I've worked on, and I can begin to talk to someone about the Lord and they'll tell me, yeah, I'm, I'm born again, I'm saved. Are you living by faith? Because this is not about a one-time decision that you made back on, you know, May, May 3rd, uh, 1992. Okay? Thank God you made the decision to believe on the Son of God. But this is about following Him and following Him in faith. Because many of the things that Christ is going to, when he tells you to follow him, he does not tell you where you're going or what this is going to look like. He doesn't tell you that up ahead. When he calls you unto himself and he calls you to believe, he is also calling you from that day forward to live by faith. Whew. Man, y'all real quiet this morning. I must be hitting something hard. And nobody's jumping up and shouting yet either. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 5 tells us that the just shall live by faith. And that next verse of Janie, if you'll bring it up, is Galatians 3 and 11. Galatians 3 and 11. Let's look at that verse real quick. I'll read it to you if you don't want to flip over there. He says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, and it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Let's go to the next page, Janie. Now the Bible tells me in 1 John, I'm making some checkpoints here about our faith. Because many times we feel like that the world is a difficult place. The world seems like it can be a very difficult place. It can be a difficult place to navigate. All of us have days, hard days, and even hard times and seasons. 
that we go through. Sometimes the world can feel like it's crushing you. I was just talking to a guy yesterday I was helping, and he was, uh, he had called me to, uh, he said, Todd, I know you, you can't do any roofing right now. I used to be a roofer. He said, I just need you to go up on this lift and point, okay? He said, can you, can you do that? And I said, sure. So he's up there. He's, he's, I'm telling him what to do, and I'm not, you know, I'm not doing anything. And he just stopped in the middle of it, and he said, I know you, you're probably in a lot of pain. He said, I, I am as well. He said, I basically live on painkillers. And he said, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know why he started this. He said, I put my gun on my dresser every night, and he said, I think about just putting it in my head and blowing my brains out every night because I'm tired of living like this. Now, there's a lot of times, and probably every person in this room, I'm not trying to say you have or haven't, has probably thought that way at some time. Many times the world feels like it can be just crushing to you. Disappointments. So many things. But look at this verse of scripture with me. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. He says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. My encouragement to him was through this verse of scripture. I know that things are difficult. I know that it seems like this is never going to end. I know that it seems like you can't see the end of the tunnel. It seems like this you're in an impossible situation. But this is where you have to believe. I am not going to accept in this life that anything that I am dealing with, that I'm stuck with it. I'm not going to accept that. Because as far as the word of God is concerned, that there is nothing that is impossible to him that believes. You have to either believe that or you don't. You have to look at whatever you are facing and say, God, I need faith in this. You know, there was a man that came to Jesus who had a demon-possessed son. And he, he said, Jesus... I took him to your disciples and they couldn't help him. You know what Jesus said? He said, bring him to me. Then he asked him, do you believe? And he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. You know how many times that Jesus, when someone got healed or received a miracle through the scriptures, what Jesus said to them? He said, your faith is what healed you. They had to believe. Every single time they had to believe. They had to have faith. There was a man that was sitting and waiting for 38 years to get healed. Jesus walked up to him and he said, would you like to be made whole? He said, yes, I would like to. But he said, you know what? Somebody always beats me there. Jesus said, rise up and walk. You have to believe. If you come to Jesus, you know, blind Bartimaeus is crying out. Everybody tells him to be quiet. Jesus is passing by. Don't disturb the master. And the Bible says that he cried out all the more. Are you going to let somebody else stand in your way? You know, they have their eyesight. He didn't. Whatever is missing or lacking, that's not the time for you to be quiet concerning the thing. There are many times that we have to pray through something or even pray until the faith comes. You know, and that is a supplication. And many times you just have to begin to just praise God. It seems like the craziest thing in your mind when you are sitting here praising God for something that has not happened yet. I'm talking about you beginning to praise God for your healing. 
whatever it is. You begin to say, God, I praise you for it. While you're hurting. Oh, Lord. I'm talking crazy to you now because that's the way it sounds to your natural mind. It sounds preposterous. It sounds like you start thinking, and the devil will try to come along and say, oh, you just lying to yourself. You just lying to yourself. God ain't going to do nothing. The Bible says that if I come to him, I have to come to him in faith. And faith says I have not seen it yet. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of that which is not yet seen. I have not seen it yet. Bill rolls in the mail. I'm getting all kind of medical bills rolling in now. I don't even know how these people got my name. Some of them, me and April are like, Where, who are these people? I'm like, April, can you call them? Every, every single time she gets off the phone, it's like, they said the zero, zero balance. You don't owe us anything. I don't know why am I getting a bill in the mail. I think they just want to see if you'll pay it or not. <laughs> they just send you a bill, you know. Maybe he'll pay it and he don't owe us anything. I'm going to start doing that, Jim. I'm going to start sending out bills to people. <laughs> Maybe they'll pay it. Amen. Let's go on uh, here. Faith overcomes the world. Faith, Jesus said, can move mountains. You know, I'm going to stop with this on faith day. I'm not even going to get into prayer. We'll go to that next week, okay? i just got a couple more verses of Scripture. I want you to be encouraged in your faith. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20 says this. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, I'll just stop there. This is the disciples asking. They were asking Jesus, why could we not help this boy? Why could we not heal him? We know that he had a devil in him. They had already worked in this. If you read in Matthew 10, they had already exercised casting out demons before. Why is it not working now? Jesus tells them, because your unbelief. Listen to me real close. Just because you had faith at one point doesn't mean that that faith is still there. Faith is something that has to be nourished. It's something that has to be fed. It's something that has to be maintained. It's something that has upkeep to it. You need to hear me on that. If you get out here, and this is how I, I talk to many people about it, if you go out here and you jump in your car and you drive it and never do any maintenance to it, now first, it's going to run out of gas. But if you never change the oil in it, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? It's going to lock up. Now, if you don't know that you've got to do maintenance to this thing, maintenance means that you fix something before it's broken. You don't wait till it breaks. Many times people are trying to search for faith when it's something's already broken. Y'all okay with that? When you get laid up in the hospital, people who have not believed are then looking for faith. And it's very difficult to find it at that point. It's like you getting into, you listen, no matter what you believe about this life, this life is like you are in a river or in a stream. And there is a flow that is happening in this life. And you have there are tides and currents that will carry you into places where you would never thought you would go to or wind up at in this life. Now, there's a choice that we have to make. is We can put our paddle in the water and steer this thing. And it is steered through our tongue. The Bible tells us that your tongue is like a rudder on a ship. And it will steer it wherever it goes. If you begin, if you continue to talk the problem, if you continue to speak the problem all the time, that's all you will ever have. Because that's what your thoughts will continually, you believe what you hear. Are y'all hearing me? You believe what you hear. That's why people believe. You know, people, they say that most people don't even listen to the news now. They get all their news off of social media. And people believe that just because it's on Facebook or even on the news that it's true. Just because what you heard is not true. Just because what the doctor told you doesn't mean it's true. 
If he told me, Todd, you're never going to recover from this, I would look at him and I'd say, I appreciate your input, but I have to go. Because I'm not going to accept that. And some people say, well, you're just, you're just trying to go against the grain of nature. That is faith. Faith is against the grain. Uh, it's against the current of this world. I'm not waiting till I get to heaven to receive all that is for me. I have an inheritance while I'm still here. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I believe that whatever is, is going to be true for me there can be true for me now. Amen. Amen. You have to believe that. That's not crazy or ludicrous. That's the Bible. If you, if you want to call it crazy or ludicrous, then the whole Bible must be crazy. And I started thinking that when I first started reading this book 25 years ago. I thought, this is the craziest thing ever. You know how I know, you know how I know when God is speaking to me? Because it will be completely the opposite of my thoughts. Because I think, I could have never thought of that. And I wouldn't have thought of that. Let's look at the next one. Anyway, I'm going to finish this verse. He says, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. It doesn't take much faith, folks. Of a little, that means that faith can be measured. Jesus even said to his disciples, They were those of little faith. That means that faith can be great. He said, I've never seen such great faith in all of Israel. And he was talking about a Roman centurion. And this man said, my servant is lying at home and he is deadly ill. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. You know what the centurion said? I don't need you to do that because I know the authority that you have and you can simply say the word. That means that someone is being healed by the word of Jesus, just him simply speaking it. And then Jesus turns around and says that you can say to a mountain, move, and it will obey you. I don't know what your mountain is or what it seems like is so big in front of you or what seems so insurmountable, but you need to begin to speak to it and tell it to move. And you have to do that in faith. This is the Bible, folks. This is the Bible. This is, this is the Word of God. God says that you can speak to it in faith and it will do what? Obey you. And he says, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing. Nothing. I don't know what you think is impossible, but that is the perfect place for you to be. Many times we think, yeah, I don't want to be in this situation. I don't want to be going through what I'm going through. It is the perfect place for you to be because it is the place where your faith can be exercised. Mark 9, 23. I've only got one more verse after this and... Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible. I don't know if you've got a pen and a piece of paper, but you are to write down what it is that seems impossible to you right now. What it is. It could be a financial, it could be a relational, it could be health, it, I don't know what it, whatever it is. You are to write it down and look at it and just sit there and look at it and say, you know what, I will not be overcome by you. I will not have you control my life anymore. Faith is taking back of your life Jesus is telling people you have mountains you're living with mountains that you don't have to live with now, some people like the mountains but I only like it for the scenery in an even place I don't want to be up and down 
all the time. Let's look at our last verse of scripture here, Janie. If you're in Mark, flip over. I was in Mark 9. You flip with me in Mark 11. I won't even get into prayer today. Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will what? You will have them. Believe that you receive them. Folks, there's a place in prayer where you have to believe. And there's a point in which prayer brings you to faith and you say, I believe it. God, I believe it. I believe it. And I'm, listen, I'm not talking about word of faith, okay? But there are certain measures to that whole teaching that has element of truth. And you have to, at some point, take hold of it and say, I believe it now. What, do, what is it that you do? What is it that you do when you finally believe? I know this may seem hard because many times it's hard to find the faith to believe. But what happens when you believe? I've reached this point many times. That's why I can speak from experience. I have prayed for a certain thing and then find myself believing. <gasps> Amazing thing happens. When we spend time with God, praying and in His Word, we come to a point of faith. You had to hear the Word of God to ever have faith in Him. But when you finally hear the Word of God and you are in prayer, you know, listen, listen to what I'm telling you because the greater part of prayer is many times when you stop talking and let Him do the talking. Because when He speaks to you, faith is there. And when that faith is there and that faith becomes the reality of your life, I'm talking about you living from the reality of faith rather than the reality of the circumstance. Are y'all hearing me today? You begin to live from the reality of faith because God lives from the reality of faith. He calls things that be not as though they were. That's how God lives. God does not look at your circumstance and say, I don't know what you're going to do. You know what? He, he, he calls things that be not as though they were. He's talking to something. Lord, I'm talking about God. If God, this is the way that God operates, isn't this how that I am to operate? If I was created in his likeness and image, then I am created as a, a being that operates by faith. I have to live by faith. I have to begin to say to it. April, y'all can begin to come on out because I'm wrapping up here. I have to live by faith. What happens when I believe? You know what happens? I stop praying. When I believe, there's no point in me praying for it anymore. Because I've already believed that I've received it. Hear what I'm telling you. This sounds crazy. You believe that you receive it. Even though you don't have it. I began praising him for it. I began thanking him for it. Some of you have heard this from me. You've heard this probably for almost a decade. But at some point you have to begin to apply it. Or else you've just become a hearer only. You have to begin to apply it. That's why I will tell you over and over, when you begin to praise God for something that you have not even received yet, then you have reached a place of greater faith. Hear me on that. Greater faith. Little faith can say to a mountain, move. A greater faith is already praising that the mountain is gone because it doesn't look at the mountain anymore. It looks at where it's going. If you don't know this, the mountain is blocking your view. It's obstructing your view of your destiny that God has set for you. It is blocking you. Tell the mountain to go. I challenge you. 
to speak to your mountain and tell it to go. Speak to it. You speak to it. You don't need me to do it. You need to do it. Jesus said, you say to your mountain, move, and it will obey you. It will obey. You need it to obey you. As a lot of times people will come and say, Pastor, I need prayer. Or they'll say, will you lay hands on me? I'm telling you that the same faith that I have, you can have. And you do have. You have a measure of faith. And that faith can increase if you will begin to exercise it. Muscles don't increase unless you exercise them. You have to exercise faith. You have to exercise your faith. Become strong in faith, not weak in faith. Amen. Thank you, Father. I'm going to go ahead and close this in prayer. I'm going to get ready for April, turn this over to April and I want you to be encouraged in your faith. I don't want you to be condemned. As many times, the devil will try to come along right behind something like this, and he'll say, you know, you don't have what he's talking about. That's not true. If you believe that Christ is the Son of God, and you believe that he's been raised from the dead, then you have faith. And you have faith that is equated to resurrection power. The power of God is here. To heal you, it is here to save, it is here to deliver. I'm going to close us in prayer at this time on that. Father, I just thank you today, Lord, for every person that's in this place. I thank you, God, for your word as it goes forward. I thank you that the word has power and it's living. I thank you that it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it's able to divide that which is soul and spirit. I thank you today for the word of God being engrafted and planted in their heart. Lord, even as you said that your word was like a seed, Lord, that when it falls into good ground, that it's able to produce, Lord, a harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Lord, I pray for the word that's gone forward today. Lord, that Satan will not be able to steal it out of their hearts. I pray for good ground for it to be buried. And I thank you for fruitfulness it's coming forth from your word of God. I thank you for that, Father, for faith arising in their hearts today. Thank you, Father.